So lead generation, we're going to be talking about four planets today. And then, of course, role play. Uh, role play meaning practice. In our world, this is batting practice, the driving range, piano practice, you know, any type of thing that you're trying to learn. It takes repetition to do this. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But what we're going to focus on is our four planets. So in lead generation, your four lead buckets that you want to master are prospecting, networking, internet marketing, and of course, direct mail. Now, you can't really master all four of these uh, day one. What I strongly recommend is usually based on your personality style, you're going to gravitate towards one or two of these a lot more than the other. You might have even just looked at this and go prospecting, huh, pew, not for me, right? Not my jam. You might go like me, I hate networking. You want to make me cry? Put me in a room of people and make me talk to them. It's literally my kryptonite. It is not what I want to do. So networking is, a, is something that I work on, but it's, it's not my favorite. I would rather make a thousand cold calls than have to get into a room and talk to people. Maybe you're more an internet marketer. Maybe you want to get your listings and you go, look, I love getting on YouTube, TikTok, social media. I love connecting and emojiing and smiley facing and doing short term, short form video. Uh, or maybe I just love building website funnels that generate leads to my website to capture information. And we're going to talk about that today. And then lastly, maybe you're just amazing at direct mail. Maybe you love doing pop buys. You love having a farm. You love sending business partners and a, and a top agent I coach. She sends out letters from the heart where it talks about her and her family and then connects with people on a higher level in her database and in her farm so that they send her business. So many different ways to win at this real estate game. But what you want to do is make sure you master one of these planets. And when I say master, you're going to hear techniques today and sources that you go all in and you really dive deep into one or two. And then you still want to be well rounded. But what people do is they dabble in each of the four and they don't get very far. If you're going to be a hardcore prospector, be a hardcore prospector. Make your living off of contacts, lead gen, doing that. If you're never going to do that and you're never going to find fulfillment in it, then let's focus on one of the other three, but they still are going to take a lot of work. It doesn't mean networking. You just get to go to happy hours and drink margaritas and go to your book club. That's not going to get you there. We're going to have to leverage the networking to turn into long-term real estate business. So think about the model that you're building. Is it going to do a hundred plus homes a year? All right. So we're going to start with, for listings today, my favorite, because it's my favorite, prospecting. And then we're going to go around the, the, the solar system here so that you understand each one that we built over time to have success with. But two that I'm going to start with, with prospecting, one of them, which I talk about all the time, is my favorite, which is the just sold call. Now, you can also apply this to door knocking, which we'll talk about here in a second. But my favorite listing lead source that I've had tons of success with in my career is the just sold call or the just sold door knock. And all this is, is making sure that first you have a just sold script. You gotta start with a script so you know exactly what to say. We'll put our script book, uh, uh, or the way for you to download our script book in the chat box. But with the just sold conversation, the mindset of this is basically you or your organization just sold a home. It doesn't have to be you, it could be your company, it could be if you're with XYZ company, whatever it is. You just sold a property or a property just sold in the neighborhood. And I'll preface this. You don't even have to have one that's from your company. If a property just sold from another competitor, you can use that property to start this conversation. All we're trying to do is let people know that a property just sold and that you work with a lot of buyers in the area. And because that one just sold, there's still buyers that are looking in this neighborhood, which is a true fact, that are interested in this area. So you're just calling the sellers to go, Hey, do you have any interest in selling or do you happen to know of anyone in the neighborhood that might be interested in selling? Now, that's about as base level of an explanation as I can get. Where just sold calls become highly profitable is you have to have what we call a check down process. So in the just sold game, when you're doing your check downs, the first thing is you have to talk to a lot of people at a very high rate and then build relationships and rapport very quickly. So you can fill your database for listings, not only now, but in the future. Where people get sometimes frustrated with just sold is you think you make 100 just sold calls and you're going to set a listing appointment. That's not the case. What It might happen. It definitely does happen. But what you're really making just sold calls to do is to find out in a specific neighborhood or area 
the status of every single person, if they're going to sell, when they're going to sell. Make sure you write that down. Just Solds are not about if they're going to sell, it's about when they're going to sell. You're going to be having that, you're going to have this whole database built on knowing this by understanding your scripts and dialogues to have this conversation with them. So I call up and I go, and remember this is a cold person in the beginning. So, hey Sally, this is Brendan with XYZ Real Estate. Hey, we just sold, or I just sold, or a home just sold at 123 Elm Street. It sold for $550,000, only took it six days to sell. It actually sold $3,000 over an initial list price. Sally, I was giving you a ring because we have a lot of buyers that are looking in this area right now, still having multiple offer situations. So I was calling all the neighbors to see if you or anyone you know might be interested in selling. Sally's going to say, yes, I do know someone. That's rare. Majority of the time, she's, she's, Sally's going to say, I'm sorry, I don't know of anyone. Oh, okay, no worries, Sally. Thank you so much for taking the time to think about it. Have you seen anybody on the street maybe getting dumpsters out and starting to prepare their house? Anything at all? I just really, really want to find my buyers a new house, right? Or I want to help these buyers find a new home or whatever it might be. They're either going to say, no, no one comes to mind. Great. Well, since I've got you on the phone, Sally, and I always do have a lot of buyers for this area, if you were to move, where would you go next? And when would that be? Oh, well, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I haven't given it much thought. I mean, after little Johnny graduates high school, we, we were always thinking about downsizing and moving to the city. Oh, that's exciting. Have you ever lived in the city? Build rapport, build rapport, blah, 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 whatever it is, right? You're having this conversation with them. That's your first check down. They don't know anybody or they're, they're not right interested right now. When and when would it be the perfect situation? Then the second check down, so they go, great, well, never, I'm gonna die in this house. I'm gonna move next month, next year. Great, you're taking notes, boom, 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 either typing them in or right handwriting them down for your, after your session to put into your CRM. Then your second check down is going to be, while I have you on the phone too, Sally, now that I know you guys are gonna move after Johnny graduates in about a year or so, um, do you happen to own any rental or investment properties? Okay. Second check down rentals or investments. If they say yes, then fantastic. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, where are those properties? And have you had an updated analysis on them? Do you currently have them rented? You're going to become their resource to find out what their current situation is as a, a what we call a, a rent by owner, but basically a tenant uh, or a, a landlord. If they don't have any investment properties, oh my gosh. Well, one of the things I do, Sally, is I help people build wealth through investing in real estate. I'm actually hosting a seller or excuse me, an investor seminar uh, via Zoom next week at 6 p.m. I'd love for you to attend that to learn how easy it is to get involved in buying your first investment property. What's the best email address for me to send you that invitation? Okay. If you don't want to do an investor seminar, first of all, not a good idea because they're super powerful. But if you don't, you can go, great. Well, I'd love to meet with you to talk to you about how you can buy your first investment property. Um, do you have some time this week or nights or weekends better for you? And just go meet them. Talk to them about investing in real estate. That's your second check down, wealth building in real estate. Remember your product, you sell houses, you sell investments. So make sure that we're very, very clear on that. And then your third check down, and this is your final check down, uh, which I guess you could have more. It's the final one I use. So if they say no to both or you don't get anywhere with anything, I go, uh, Sally, well, one of the things I do, uh, all the neighbors, I put a monthly market report that tells you every stat about the neighborhood, what's sold, what's active, what's listing. All the neighbors love it. I don't see you currently on my list. Would you like to receive that update via mail or, reg or uh, email or regular mail? Everything you just heard me do, I do in a tie down, which is called an alternate close. It's not asking them if they want to receive it. It's in what format do they want to receive it so that it's a or it's not a yes or no. That's the nuance of that entire script. Every single piece of it has to be nuanced. That leads in, do you want to do this this way or do you want to do it this way? One way or another, you're doing something with me. Cool. That's the whole point of this. So that's a big call. 